In our last lesson for chapter 7, we're going to focus on something called the discriminant. So the discriminant has a nice little formula. It's b squared minus 4ac. So that might seem familiar. It actually comes directly out of the quadratic formula. You know how the quadratic formula says negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. So the quadratic or the discriminant is used to determine the nature of the roots. So roots are the same thing as our solutions for x when we did um, solving with completing the square or the quadratic formula. When we solve for x and we got those answers, those were the roots. So the discriminant, once we find the value of the discriminant, we're going to be able to determine the nature of those roots. So we've got three questions we're going to ask ourselves. First, are the roots real or imaginary? Are they equal or not equal? And are they rational or irrational? So let's go over a couple definitions here. When you're talking about real or imaginary, so remember real numbers, anything that isn't imaginary, all right? Rational numbers, well actually I don't want to skip equal or not equal. Um, I'm going to talk about that in a minute, but basically if the two answers are the same, then it's equal. If the two answers are different, we would say not equal. And that's going to make more sense in a minute. And then the third thing we determine is if it's rational or irrational. So rational numbers have a pattern or terminate. For example, 7 over 2 is 3.5. That terminates. That is a rational number. 1 over 11 has a repeating pattern. It's a point zero nine zero nine zero nine. So when the pattern repeats, that is also rational. And irrational numbers are numbers that are not rational. So they do not terminate and they do not repeat. An example would be pi, 3.14159 blah, 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 blah. Um, that does not terminate. It continues forever, but there's no pattern to it. So that's why that is irrational. Another example, if you were to type in the square root of 2 on your calculator, if you look at this answer or this number, dot, 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 it continues forever, so it doesn't terminate, and we can see that there's no pattern here. So that is an irrational number. All right, so what we are going to do is follow this. This is going to be the important part of determining the nature of our roots. So where it says D, that stands for discriminant. So when we do our B squared minus 4AC, if that answer, if that number is greater than zero, that means that our roots are real and they are unequal, which means that we would have two different answers. Now, when they're unequal, if it's a perfect square, so if we do b squared minus 4ac and we get 25 or we get 49 or 81, that's a rational number. Or that would be a rational root. If we do b squared minus 4ac and we get, let's say, 10, 10 is not a perfect squared number, so we're going to call that irrational. All right, if d is equal to 0, it's going to be a real number. The roots are equal, meaning the two roots you would find are the same number, and then they are rational. If d is less than 0, that means that we have imaginary roots and they are conjugates. So imaginary, let's say it's 5 plus um, 2i. A conjugate to that would be the same, the same imaginary number, but with a minus sign, so 5 minus 2i. So when you're solving the quadratic formula, um, you know how we have, let's say, 5 plus or minus 2i. And remember when we got answers that could look like that? Well, those are conjugates. One has a plus, one has a minus. And because of the i, they are imaginary. So in the next um, few videos, you're going to see examples of finding the discriminant and then listing off which of these apply. But you're going to keep coming back to this in your notes.